the Joe Rogan experience. What when when your first actual film film was what like two thousand four two thousand two thousand yeah because the way it went down was this is a funny story too I made my first movie House of a Thousand Corpses at Universal Studios and it was. 2000, it could have been even the tail end of 1999. I'm not sure. The only reason I know it's 2000, I had a rap gift somebody gave me and they put a date in. I was like, oh shit, it was 2000. So I made the movie with Universal Studios. And once they screened it, we had our test screening, which I thought went, I thought went great. What do I know? The, the uh, head of Universal at the time came up to me and was like, we have to talk tomorrow. I was like, <laughs> oh man, that was not a good tone. That wasn't a, you're so great. We want to give you a five picture deal tone of voice. So the next day they dumped the movie and, you know, just basically booted us out. And then- What was the conversation? They were like, we, basically this is unreleasable. (laughs) (laughs) I don't remember word for word, but that was the conversation in a nutshell. But at the time too, you figure there was no horror coming out of Universal. They were making like the Flintstones movie and that was not the image they wanted. This really vile sort of, backwoods hillbilly murder fest where there's the bad people win essentially i mean horror films were sort of like not even a commercial thing at that point in a way so then um which is funny now if you go to universal studios hollywood or orlando there's a huge house of a thousand corpses thing event going on in both theme parks that's hilarious i was there for the old grand opening like that's funny. Again, <laughs> like it's like a train. It's like I get fired from here and now, you know, 20 years later, it's a theme park attraction in the exact place I got fired from. Wow. Which is so weird. What was the conversation like before you decided to do that film? I mean, how did how did they let you do it? I don't, it, you know, I, again, I think getting to make a movie for Universal Studios was such an amazing experience, but I think I was too naive to understand what was happening. It'd be like you did one set of comments. It was like, hey, we're going to put you on tour with George Carr. And you're like, cool. I guess this is the way it happens, man. You know? <laughs> and then it's after like, wow, well, I didn't really appreciate it. Just went down, did I? Not that I was took it for granted, but I, I, had, I had met with someone at the theme park about doing a, a haunted maze during their horror, Halloween Horror Nights based on my album. And then sort of by being in the offices was meeting meeting people and having just meetings about stuff or I just didn't want to leave once I got in the studio. I just loved being there even though I had no business being there. And somehow, I remember being in the guy at the time, his name was Kevin Misher, his office, pitching him a movie I didn't have a pitch for. I had a title, but no, nothing else. And somehow it progressed from there. I was like, really? I told them kind of a cool title with a completely half-ass idea that I was making up as I was talking to him. <laughs> what did you say? Like, how, what was the conversation? I don't even remember. I w- it was weird. I don't even, I, I can't, rem- I wish I could remember it well because it, it, after the fact, I'm like, how did this happen? I don't remember. This is like, your story is like the anti-ambition story. It's like the <laughs> anti-preparation story, but exactly. super successful nonetheless. It's, yeah, I guess the the goal is just be vague with people. <laughs> <laughs> be vague and look cool. <laughs> <laughs> and act like you don't care. And I had that attitude too. I remember once the movie was rolling, I was like, this is who I want to cast and this is exactly what I want to do. And if you guys don't want to do it, that's cool. Let's just not work together. And they did it. Wow. Like that's well, <laughs> great pitch on my part, right? And I, we shot it on the Universal Backlot we were like right there, like doing the whole thing and big production and it was weird. Wow, when when it wrapped, like final day, final scene, and that's a wrap. Were you like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> well, the funny thing is, like after we wrapped the first time, we had a little test screening within the studio, like friends. And like, oh, we, could, we should probably punch up the ending. So they gave me like, they gave me more money to reshoot the ending than I actually made my newest movie with. It was like money was nothing. Like, you know, they're just throwing money around like it's like nothing. I was like, oh my God, this is insane. We were building these giant sets doing all this crazy stuff. It was after that that, you know, the problem started. But <laughs> um, I don't, I, I wish I could remember these things better. It, it's weird that I don't. But what <laughs> attracted you to this ultra violent psychopath? like uh, outcast murderous style of movie that you do because you have like these almost like mutant society psycho murder people that I don't people, know but people fucking love it man They're I've resp- always dug like 
outsider mentality. Like anything that involved like out, I think it started as a kid, as a kid, because like a lot of people can relate to this. I didn't feel like I fit in. Like I was like weird. I didn't fit in. I didn't get like what were the cool shoes to wear or the right freaking eyes on shirt. I didn't understand. I wasn't trying to be, you know, no one's trying to be weird. And I'm like, oh yeah, I want to be weird and hide away because I'm weird. No, it's like, I don't understand. And I think when I would watch the monster movies, the monster was always that mentality. Like King Kong's like, hey man, I'm just trying to get along. Why is everyone shooting at me? And Frankenstein's <laughs> like, hey, I was just born yesterday. Why are you trying to kill me? Like, and I think as a weird kid, you relate to the monster. So as life went on and, you know, the... I would always relate to The Outsider. Then I would always relate to movies like Taxi Driver or Bonnie and Clyde. And I'd be like, yeah, Travis Bickle, you know, he's, he's the fucking man. You know, and I would always be like anything anti-society, anything, fuck you, fuck everything that's normal. Right, like revenge. Yeah. <coughs> I was yeah. just into it. And I, I felt real similar when I was a kid. I was always into monster movies. I was yeah. always into something that just just tore all the normal people apart and just ripped apart all the yeah. preconceived notions of what everybody thought was going to happen. And then around the, and towards the end of high school, when I discovered punk rock and you figure out there's an entire form of music where they're just like, go fuck yourself. Yeah. That's what we're here. I was like, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> and so many other people as well. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, it just, it flips your whole idea of what life is. And then when I moved to New York, I was like, Wow. There's an entire city of people who don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where they come. Yeah. Nobody gives a shit about anything here. It's it's amazing how your movies resonate with people. <clears throat> like to um, like in a fanatical way. Like the, you read the comments on just the trailer for uh, Three from Hell. You know, just people are so fucking pumped. Yeah, it's it's great. And I mean, it's been a, it's been a long journey because like when my first movie came out, I think Every review basically said something along the lines of worst movie ever made. I hate this movie. And now people are like, dude, let, that's your best movie. You know, like you've been chasing it ever since. So it's just weird. How, same with White Zombie. When our first Geffen, I still remember this. Our first Geffen record came out. I saw the first review. It was this magazine, Alternative Press, who two years ago gave me this Lifetime Achievement Award. And I had to read the review while I accepted the award. The review said, this is the worst band ever. <laughs> I was like, ever? <laughs> Come on. And it, it said, this is the worst band ever. Ignore this band. Mm. So there was a, something, a, you know, there must have been something. Did you ever contact the person who wrote that? No, I didn't. I, back then, I was just like. Was just I weird. mean, like, I, I felt like maybe a few years later, once you were really <laughs> successful. I can't remember who it was. I, <coughs> I used to be upset by reviews until I saw who wrote them. Mm, yeah. You know. Yeah. That's and a then problem. You go, that guy, I don't know why I care. a lot of critics are critics because they really wanted to be writers. They just don't have a lot to contribute, and so they just shit on things. And it's just like you, as a when you're young and you're new and you're reading it, you think that the guy who's writing it, writing it all badass. You'll think, oh, this dude must look like Lemmy. He must be this hard ass guy, and oh. yep. And then you see a guy like that guy wrote it. Oh, fuck him, <laughs> and fuck everyone else who ever writes anything again. I don't give a shit. <laughs>